Beverly D. Berdani, and she's an extraordinary woman living dynamically, and uh, that must be what the D means. <laughs> and uh, she she says that she what she wanted at 30 is not necessarily what she wanted at 75. She thinks you should be a thinker, allow yourself to do that. And she's learned a lot in life, and she uh, sees people as they really are, not just their public face. And uh, she sees life as a very beautiful experience. She's done a lot, and she's got a lot more to do. And she still has a couple of hurrahs left in her, and she's a grandmother, and she's going to be talking a lot about that this evening. But before we go on with that, we're going to have Melanie Peterson with Cinema Girl, and um, this sort of sets the tone for the whole program as we jump in our own sandboxes. Cuts our hair real nice, real nice. Hey, cinema girl, you're quite a vision. Won't you tell your secret? She said, Every day I make a promise to myself. Every day I keep it, I keep it, I jump in the sandbox, jump in the sandbox, jump in the sandbox every day and play. And that's Melanie Peterson with Cinema Girl. And uh, that was a person she met uh, during the TIFF, uh, Drew Barrymore. And uh, what an incredible song that came out of that wonderful meeting. And we have another person we're going to meet tonight, a wonderful meeting of minds and spirits and a body. And we have Beverly D. Berdani in studio. Come on close to the mic. Pull that mic right up close there, Beverly. That's great. And uh, yeah, pull it down a little bit wherever. There you go. And welcome so much to uh, to a drink of water. I'm so glad you came in. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> That's great. And um, Beverly, when I talk about body, mind, and spirit, that really does epitomize everything that you've done in your entire life, actually. And Beverly, you you have an, a remarkable life, an extraordinary life, because it didn't start off that easy for you. How did it start out for you? So people can understand the extent 
of the challenges you faced and how you've overcome them and how you can help other people do that. My major challenge has been a congenital situation. Mm -hmm. I was born with a spina bifida, number three to five, have scoliosis throughout my entire back, mm -hmm. and of course, I have one leg um, three quarter, half an inch to three quarters of an inch shorter than the other. And this has been a remarkable challenge. And of course, most physicians have always wanted to operate on this because there are many internal problems affected by the nerves that feed the the body. Mm -hmm. And course, uh, my spine, parents yeah. were of the old school. They said, this is what the child God gave us and nobody's touching her. And we're just going to throw in the water and let her swim. So I've been swimming ever since. Wow. And um, the challenges have been many, simply because uh, from a physical perspective, I have a tremendous amount of pain. And um, it takes um, an enormous amount of inner strength just to get the day going. And as a child, I didn't quite understand all the melodies I, I had. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but as I grew older, I got to understand what the body was all about. Of and course. of course, then I started to apply good judgment in order to survive and have a full life. Now, you know, it's too bad we're here on radio because if people were to look at you, see you, you stand as straight as a tree, beautiful posture. You, you have incredible energy. And I'm always amazed by you. You're so gorgeous. And, you know, Thank you're you. so well-groomed and elegant. And, and uh, you know, you're just, uh, and you, you have been, um, you've been written, you know, you've had a lot of different um, opportunities to be on television and to write in magazines and to lecture at universities. And uh, you have a lot to give. And uh, you have you and you're wonderful. You're a volunteer. You, your community is important to you, and you're continually giving. I don't know. It's like your whole day. You must start the day off with, uh, well, what can I do today? A good cup of coffee. <laughs> a good cup start, of coffee to start the day. Yes, absolutely. A good <laughs> cup of coffee always helps. <laughs> I agree with you there. It gets the motor running. <laughs> it, it, it oils the gears. Exactly. <laughs> and your gears need oiling. Mm -hmm. And so how else? You, you're a fitness instructor, but you weren't always a fitness instructor. You started off in another profession. That's correct. I started off um, in my first years uh, as a nurse. Mm -hmm. I uh, felt that um, that was very important because I believe in taking care of people and giving of myself. Mm -hmm. Um, thereafter, I went back to university and got uh, a commerce degree in which I then utilized it for getting a uh, professional um, position within the dental field. Mm -hmm. And um, my last one was I was director of Canada for an international firm out of, uh, out of Japan, Kyoto, Japan. Wow, so international business yes, lady. that's correct. And, uh, and I've traveled extensively on behalf of the firm, and um, I did exceptionally well. And I made my decision at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo that I no longer wanted to be on the international circuit. So I knew I had a program that everyone could benefit from because... I did. I just want to go back one moment of to course. that that former career of yours because yes. you're an extraordinary lady and you get what you want. Yes. And you were you your career was actually one that was really populated by a lot of men and then in those days that was, you know, business and everything was and you were you were kind of like a um Odd man out. I was a woman ahead of my time. A woman ahead of your time. But there was also... Unlike Hollywood. There is the scandal of today. Yes, exactly. But, oh my goodness, horrifying. Um, but you, there was a situation where if you made your quota, then after the quota, you would get a 2% bonus. Was that it? Was that this yes. kind of thing? Yes. And, and you weren't getting yours. Precisely. And, but the other one, the other guys, the men the were. Men were the, let's exactly. say it, yeah. So what did you do? So what I simply did was went to the owner of the firm mm -hmm. and told him very specifically, I am your top producer. I'm also uh, the Ontario uh, manager. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the uh, Canadian manager and I'm entitled as an uh, 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 
an overall uh, commission because I'm really the one who's making things happen in, in this division. Wow, and you got your... And I've got my, my pay. But that you had to day. ask for it was just... Well, uh, it's a man's world. Nothing has changed. I, you know what? I'm glad you said that. And I'm not, not meaning not to go and into the other stuff. I'm not No, no, no I, I completely agree. Challenging. It is challenging, and a lot of people. I'm going to just. I'm going to actually visit that for one moment Please. because that's a very good one. You know, it hasn't been even a hundred years since we've had like any kind of independence as women and elect you know, the vote and all this kind of stuff. You know, and being able to go out to work and all that kind of thing. We've our our, our it's changed over the last hundred years, but very slowly, and. People real think, oh, with women's lib and this, that, and the other, that, oh, you know, all of a sudden women are empowered. And really, when you look at it very carefully, it's a thin veneer. It really is a man's world. And I do agree with you. Yes. I do agree with you, Beverly. However, you have found a way to empower women and to, and not just women, men too, but you do seem to focus on women and their bodies and how they can, well, age gracefully and and with strength and have a, a a good quality of life true i don't only work with women yes with I, men as, as well men yes and women okay. and i've worked with very many influential individuals over okay. the many years because i've been in i wasn't the sure about that i do apologize no yeah, problem my <laughs> the important thing is um because to me to be alive and to participate in life Yes. And to be active and to do the things I want to do, particularly with a discombobulated body as I have, I have, I made certain that I would be at my personal best. Yes. And this dates back to over 50 years ago when I studied um, in Austria on the functional movement, which the um, North American doctors, physicians, uh, surgeons did not understand. Mm. To them, surgery was the most important issue. Yeah. After the birth of my child, I, um, I was told, first of all, I was told never to get pregnant. Mm. However, I wanted a child because I wanted to be a woman. I wanted to understand what it was f fully to represent and enjoy life. And mm -hmm. to me, a child is most important. Yes. So I did that at the expense of my body simply because I spent, I got an additional medical condition called placenta pe previa. Oh, that's terrible. Which, yeah. which put me into bed for many months. And also and with your spine the way it exactly. was. That must have been very so hard So I on ended you. up in a body cast and in a wheelchair. Holy moly. And um, that was my saving grace by studying in Austria, mm -hmm. in Bedgestein, that I was able to um, fully uh, get a program that would make my body work for me instead of against me. Now, that being the case, I work with many individuals who have fallen between the cracks. In other words, mm. they haven't been able to get the kind of attention from a physical perspective as they would require. So I felt after I left the uh, international scene mm -hmm. that I had a program to sell, so I set up my own personal business in 1984 and have been in it since and still working every day. So what you were doing was actually innovative because it was before people were really talking about your core strength. Is exactly, that correct? Exactly, that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you're also reminding me of the nurse who helped polio, children with polio, because she felt that exercising those muscles and stretching them was, was otherwise pe the children were crippled. They were, they, were, they were put in terrible, um, uh, uh, braces and on crutches exactly. and she was actually getting them to walk but i forget the, the, her name but you remind me of that lady thing, and a nurse another yes, nurse like i believe exercise is medicine and i do not mm -hmm. feel that taking medication solves the problem there's a place for it sure. however you are totally responsible for your body mm -hmm. and you have to make it function as best as you can uh -huh. And you deal with it. Right. And you wake up in the morning. If you have to do a program as I do, mm -hmm. before I get off the bed, I do whatever I have to do so I can be vertical and functional and be able to have a great day, share it with individuals, and hopefully help someone else too. 
Well, on that note, we're going to go to break because it's 9.15 here at CHHA 1610 AM. And if you're just tuning in, we're listening uh, to uh, Beverly D. Berdini, and she is a fitness uh, inst- fitness and, and wellness. Uh, I, I'd say uh, in, you're an instructor, but you're, you're so much more than that. And we're going to hear more words of wisdom about how we can live life to the fullest and uh, live dynamically no matter what age we are. So we'll be back right after this. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. And that's Blair Packham and his song, Road to Discovery. And we are on a kind of a road to discovery here on A Drink of Water tonight with Beverly D. Berdani. And she's in studio with us this evening. Beverly, um, like I said before we went to break, you're more than a fitness instructor or personal exercise coach, as I see here as well. 
um, because I, there's a beautiful quote that I'm seeing here. It's light that you that you said. It's um, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. How poetic! You're a poet. You're you're a philosopher as Thank well. You. And I understand that when you when you talk to people, you're not just seeing their their public persona, but also, you know, like we talked about that a little bit in your introduction. But what their needs are. So you are really looking at who they are, each person, and how they need to function in their lives and what they need, you know. So. That's correct. Mm-hmm. What I, when I set up my business, I did it on a one-to-one. <clears throat> I was the first to offer that kind of service. So in other words, if when I meet you, I just don't simply say, well, I want 10 push-ups or I want 10 uh, sit-ups, something of that nature. Mm-hmm. I first and foremost try to understand the person it's not what they say but it's what their body reveals mm-hmm. and through that i i understand what makes the body function right and then design a special program to bring them from ground zero so to speak to being their personal best at whatever level that may be well, you mentioned something, too, about uh, I was reading something that you had talked about regarding aging and how a lot of people walk when they as they age, they walk like they're walking like apes, sort of punched Absolutely. over and on their tiptoes and they fall. And also you were talking about before how you before you get up out of bed, you do what you need to be able to even get out of your bed, because I'm sure a lot of people follow their beds and break their hips. Absolutely, and, you know? and and it's not only that, but as you age, you also have to be certain that um, that your blood pressure is normal before you get to walking, because that's why a lot of people fall. Right, uh, it's the, too low or something. Exactly, and then they, because oh, you're, in a, you're coming in from a lying position to a sitting position, but if you sit for at least a minute right. at the edge of the bed and give yourself a good stretch, take a few deep breaths, mm-hmm. chances are you're better in control of your body, and then you can get up. And that's at any age. That's at any, well, particularly, in, I'm talking of the age. Well, but older product. people as well, yes. but good and to get into the habit. Indeed, and also, if in turn you have any uh, internal issues this is something worthwhile to consider and implement on a daily basis sure yes. yeah so <laughs> i guess that would also pertain you know, to couch potatoes don't get out don't get off that couch too fast after watching eight hours of turner classic movies yes. that's just not going to work so yes. that's another thing you believe that uh, from when i i was reading um you got to keep moving like yes. a shark yes <laughs> i'm gonna absolutely. i'm adding like a shark Indeed. and that and that food's not as important as life so we can talk a little bit about that. The okay. food's important, but it's, yes. you know. But um, you should not make food your main priority. Mm-hmm. Food is only a priority for good nutrition. Mm-hmm. Because I believe my formula says it all. The big three R's, rest, relaxation, and, uh, and relationships. And then food comes into play. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to have little little Nour- food and drink and, and the nur- correct and nourishment. nourishment for your body. But what That's I'm right. saying, you shouldn't indulge excessively. You eat in order to feed your body and your soul so that you are at your personal best from a nutritional perspective, just as you would be when in turn you're trying to create a physical body that can perform and work for you instead of against you. Well, yeah, because we we have a little factory. We it's this is not just um, something you put nice clothes on and do your hair. You know, this is something internally. People spend more time on the outside than they do on the inside. Exactly, and it's most unfortunate. It it is, and <laughs> and and you were talking too about um, I about a car. You know, people spend more time on their car, oiling it, making sure the oil is there, and the 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 wa- they've got enough water in the rad and they've got their their tires changed and they've got everything done you know mm-hmm. check the plugs check everything check even the you know the pressure in the tire so what about the pressure in our bodies like you mentioned before like people just don't do that unfortunately it individuals just don't understand that God gave us a body yes but we have to take care of it it is our mm-hmm. personal vessel mm-hmm. and. Whatever we have to do to be uh, from a as a physical, mental, spiritual perspective intact, we have to do it. First and foremost, that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then we can indulge and understand where we can play the field. 
Yeah, and I think when you're talking like this, a lot of people see their bodies as just a physical thing, you know. Like, a, 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 So if they are taking care of their bodies, they're taking care of their physical, but it really is important to also take care of the physical, the mental, the spiritual at the same time because yes. they're all hooked up. It's all one unit. Yeah. It's, it is one unit. One unit. <laughs> one unit. So, yes. so having the um, the infrastructure to support that unit, mm -hmm. <laughs> so to speak, the unit we were given uh, to perform whatever we need to do while we're on this planet, is very important. And it's our responsibility to do so. Yeah, it's not anyone else's. No, not mm -hmm. at all. So, how do you get people motivated to do that, Beverly? Because that's not easy. It isn't easy. However, if you step back mm -hmm. and put yourself in a position whereby your body is dysfunctional and you're not able to do the things you want to in life, right. you can't work, you can't, I mean, your life is just limited. Right. The question then becomes, do you want to be a living dead or in turn, do you want to put your act together to participate in life. That's really interesting on the eve of Halloween that you talk about the living dead. No, but it's it's precisely. like that. You do you precisely. want do you want to be a zombie or a ghoul? Do you want to be walking around not even walking around or walking around like Frankenstein's monster? Yes. You know, like, yes. it's not going to work. Or if you're confined to bed, that's, yeah. that's not a life. It's, it's not a life. No, it's not a life. So therefore, you have to. Uh, and particularly if you hire an individual such as myself, you want to have results. And if you choose not to listen to my advice, then in turn, I will not maintain you as a patient client. Well, I think that's, that's with anything, you know, if you're not going to do it. I know I... I why uh, waste my time and why waste your money? No, exactly, exactly. So, you know, that's the whole deal. So, and, and, and it's a waste of, why waste our lives? And that's really important, you yes. know. It's, it, it, that's really the bottom life, the life, the bottom life. Line. The bottom yeah. line the, is life, and that's yes. the most important thing. We're going to be heading off to break again. It's uh, coming up to 928, and uh, we'll have more talk about... Um, all aspects of, of wellness and uh, talk about more about uh, some of the achievements that uh, Beverly has had in her life and uh, continues to do and talk about how, you know, we're in a different world now and how do we deal with that. So we'll go out to break. We'll be back right after this. CHHA 1610 AM Radio Voces Latinas. The first and only Hispanic radio station in Canada from Toronto to the world. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, 1610 AM. A drink of water. Enough, 
אנחנו פשוט קוראים ספרים שונים. אבל העיקר, נהנים בדיוק מאותם טעמים. אנחנו אוכלים, אנחנו נושמים, אנחנו מרגישים, אנחנו חולמים. צוחקים, בוכים, מתביישים, מצטערים, כולנו קדושים. קרובים אבל רחוקים, והמילים של החיפוש יות כל מה שצריך זה אהבה. exactly the same God. We're simply reading different texts, but eating exactly the same foods. We all drink, we all breathe, we all feel, we all dream, we all laugh, we all cry, we're all shy, we're all sorry, we're all holy. No asthma. No asthma. No asthma. Ma No as Ma No as Ma No as Ma No as Ma That was Roy Dagan with New Asma, and it is now 9.32 and a cool six degrees. My, it's gone up one degree since this uh, program started. I just want to remind everybody listening that uh, you are invited to our 13th uh, radio anniversary uh, for CHHA 1610 AM Radio Voces Latinas on November the 18th. That's uh, this coming, right in, coming up to November. November is coming up. And uh, there's going to be a lot of Latin music, food, and uh, lots of surprises at the Tibetan Cultural, Canadian Cultural Center. That's the Tibetan Canadian Cultural Center at 40 Titan Road. Toronto, Ontario. That's November 18th, 2017. And it uh, starts at uh, 6 o'clock. So come on out. And uh, it's $30 per ticket. And you can call the office here at uh, 416-782-2953. Get your tickets. Get them for the family, your neighbors, your friends. You know, come on, bring them out and introduce them to CHHA. If you're listening, you'll want them to listen to. We'd love to celebrate with you on November 18th. Now, um, just want to get back to my guest here. We got Beverly D. Burdani in in, uh, in studio. Beverly, you know, you were talking about um, how it's, you know, it's a different world, really, you know, uh, that we lived in. Now, you're... I, now, you don't mind sharing your age. I know my mother said that if a woman who shares her age will tell you, tells her age will tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> so true. It is so true. So tell us. <laughs> come on, come close to that my mic and tell us. I'll be 78. You'll be 78. My yes. gosh. Well, you don't look at, you don't act, and you don't move like a 78-year-old. Let me tell you, as you came in your track pants and your fitness clothes and everything tonight, wow, you look great. And... Um, so what you wanted at 30 isn't necessarily what you want at 78. So can you explain that a little bit and how things have changed over the time, you know, over time for you? Well, at 30, I think you're much more career-oriented and in turn are, are looking for the opportunities of how to position yourself in a profession that could be very rewarding. As I mentioned, I've had three and um, I feel that at each level, I have done super well for myself. Mm-hmm. I'm content. I feel accomplished. 
And I've shared my life on various levels yes. because I'm not only a professional woman, I'm also a family a, a person. I have a community. Do- community. I do community volunteer work as well. And uh, a daughter and four grandchildren. That's I understand. correct. Wow. And I mean, uh, I've tried to be a hands on individual on every level. Hmm. And it's been most rewarding. It is. So would you say that um, even though things are changed from, and they say, you know, nowadays people are going to have 10 careers in their lifetimes, it's not possible. just three, that that, yes. that possibility is but there. But I was a woman ahead of my time when I was doing those things. That you had three is amazing. Some yes. didn't even have one. Precisely. You know, and that's, that was really great. So you are a role model for so many people. Um, Thank you. Yeah, well, absolutely. But certainly the idea is to be moving, not to get up in the morning and and just slump. You have to have a purpose. Yeah. You have to understand why you were placed on earth. Yeah. You have to know what you should contribute mm-hmm. and what your role of as a person is in this world. How do you do that? How do you personally do that? Well, again, as I say, a woman has different categories within her soul. And... Um, you begin with the fact if you are a person and you bring out that personal best. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, if you are a wife, you are a mother, you are a professional, then in turn you endeavor to give your personal best on all those levels. Mm-hmm. Whatever the requirement is, you should be able to handle it. Yeah. And you know, of course now, and I'm 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 not beating the drum one way or another for this or that, but now with genders there is there's certainly a lot of things have come forward like in in uh, you know like i'm 62 and uh, when we were growing up and when you were growing up you know there were two genders male and female but there now and 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 in those days we didn't talk about uh, uh things like that but we also didn't talk about wife beating or we didn't talk about uh sexual assault we didn't talk about a lot of things were kept well, those un- were taboo they were taboos and this this that used to be a taboo so there are a lot of things this is not a taboo anymore so when it's people reality. Are, it's, it's absolute life. reality it's absolute life so now life is that's what i'm saying how things have been different different from mm-hmm. when even i grew up and 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 you and how you know roles have changed so much but doesn't but matter. You, had, you were restricted to your roles in my That's, days. Yes. Uh, let's begin mm-hmm. with the fact that you didn't have the options, you know, to be the dentist or the doctor no. or the uh, accountant or lawyer or anything like that. In the very no. selected, perhaps, situations, but most of the time you were uh, positioned in the fact that you could be a secretary a social worker, a teacher, a nurse. A nurse. Yeah. Okay, those were the, mm-hmm. and more specifically, young women went, uh, if they did anything, uh, they simply wanted a Mrs. degree. That was the most at important. The, at the Because it wasn't what you were, it's who you married that count. Well, my mother left home at 17. She didn't want to be at home. She wanted to do all kinds of things, theater and film and everything, but she got married to leave home. And a lot of women did that because that was respectable. Exactly. If you left 17 and went off to, you know, trip the light fantastic and become an couldn't. actress, you'd be considered, you know, a wanton woman, you know? No, unfortunately, mm-hmm. that was the case. Not now. No. Well, there are restrictions yet to some degree, but many, many doors are opened. Thank goodness. And uh, you can pick and choose your professions. You Mm -hmm. can choose. Some women are choosing not even to marry because they're married to their professions and they prefer that. Yeah. And And just to have a wholesome life without even a family. Yeah. And, and and if that's their choice, that's their choice. Absolutely. It's it's their life. It's their, exactly. I personally wanted a child. Yes, you did. And uh, I paid a bitter price for it, but I would never change my life. No. I I did the things I wanted to do, and I know that I have been rewarded simply because I'm content. So it's about making today count it's about and you, you also talk a lot about the power of the mind yes and I'll speak to us a bit about that power of the mind well you can't control your body if you can't understand your mind mm. it's you are one unit your mind and your body yes and you have to read your body in order to use your mind correctly for it 
And I think when you have that combination, you're able to understand what you can and cannot do. Well, you and you have to be aware. You yeah. have to be mindful of your choices. If you don't, then you can run into problems. And mindfulness is a very big thing nowadays. Now, it, yes. Yeah, and it's helping so many people overcome so many things. Because I know with mindfulness in dialectical behavioral therapy, that's a, a cornerstone. Now, you're doing something at the Baycrest as well. You, you're a woman of Baycrest. Yes, I was honored as a woman of Baycrest. You are. Um, that was involving the uh, program uh, whereby um, women's brain health was mm-hmm. placed on the map through Baycrest at the time. And I was instrumental in helping put this program into place. That's remarkable because now they're doing such wonderful things at Baycrest with yes. music. Yes. And because they're finding that people remember things through music, it triggers. Like they're, they're, they're really doing some incredible yes. things with the brain. Yes. Like neuroscience and stuff there right yes. now. So you were instrumental in getting that whole program started. Well, I was like, a, uh, I was one of the individuals. The program was uh, instrument or put together by Lynn Poslins. Yes, Leah Poslins. Yes. yes, Lynn Poslins. Lynn, Lynn Poslins. Yes. yes. Wow. I was just, as they say, one of the individuals um, that helped out. And I was uh, rewarded by being honored as a woman of Baycrest for my contribution. Well, that's absolutely beautiful. You're also a woman of action. That's correct. (laughs) (laughs) Why are we surprised? (laughs) Well, I was taken any time I'm recognized in that capacity because I just feel that I am I refer to myself as BDB. I don't try to impress. I don't try to do anything other than the fact of making the moment count yeah. and to be certain that I do, that I don't hurt anyone, that I don't take advantage of anyone. I'm more a giver than a taker. So you treat people with uh, kindness with then, and with and respect and, and understanding then. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's something that a lot of, you know, a lot of people have a lot of knowledge and they go out there and they, oh, I know how to do this, that and the other. And they kind of push their way around. And, um, you know, they may know a lot and may be very helpful in, on some level, but they say a little bit of uh, honey goes a long way. Oh, absolutely. I think you have to... Um, evaluate what a person can and cannot do and instill in them that desire to move in that direction Mm -hmm. bring out their personal best personal best because you know who you are Mm -hmm. but you have to share that it's not all about me it can be about you and i think when you share that opportunity with another individual you raise them to a level of respecting themselves and they want to achieve very good point that's right because a lot of people are so um so crushed so squashed like a bug when they're very young and they have so much trouble getting up you talk about being able to get out of bed but just being able to get into your life because people have to realize what they're doing to their kids but they don't unfortunately And uh, that's where mindfulness comes into play, Mm -hmm. whereby life begins at a very early stage. And whatever you do to help your child allows them then to be to be the best they can be on every level. And there are so many theories over the years since Dr. Spock, you know. Yes, of uh, course. You know, we, I will start with Dr. Spock because that's like my era when I was born, you know. Well, I uh, remember him well. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Spock. But, you know, like, so many people are given so many contradicting ideas of how to raise children and how to, you know, so because they eventually become that person who sits on the couch or has no motivation or is depressed or has some sort of disability in whatever way, you know, whether, and even if they were born with a disability like you with spina bifida and scoliosis and, and every, and, you know, one leg shorter than the other. I mean, I can't believe this, you know, I, I'm looking at you, I don't see it, but there you are, you know, like some, that's poor, that's there, <laughs> but imagine how, how, and your parents just said, jump in the water. No, they, they didn't really say no, jump in the water. No, they throw just her into the water throw and let her in the swim. Water. That's right. But they, were they, po- were they very positive with you? Were they very good with you? Yes. Um, they really felt that I was a God's child mm-hmm. and in turn, I would survive without the interference of uh, medical intervention. 
because what they were offering me at the time, and we're going back so well, many years, okay? Yeah. We don't have the sophisticated mm-hmm. surgical procedures that we have today. It would have been that I would have, I don't even know if I'd be here today no. simply because had they uh, operated in the areas uh, uh, that control my body, mm-hmm. chances are I w- would have been a vegetable and would not be here. Further crippled, and yeah, yeah. and I use the word crippled because that is exactly it, it is crippling. Yes. Well, it's nine forty-five. We're going to go to break. <laughs> Time flies Indeed. on a drink of water, and uh, we'll be back right after this with Beverly D. Bredanian. D means dynamic. You are listening to Radio Voces Latinas, sixteen ten. A.M. A drink of water. Be creative in the things that you don't want to even talk about. Be creative in the things that your teachers used to laugh about. Be creative in the things that you always used to dream about. Be creative. It's Chris Burkett with Be Creative and uh, Tonight we've had uh, Beverly DiBerdani in studio talking about you know, how to be creative with your life, uh, Beverly, and how to how to make things happen for yourself, not to just let them happen to you, like lethargy and illness, and 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 we do know that people do have challenges as well, and uh, it's going to be. But you meet people where they're at, and help them from there. That's correct. Yeah. Um, again. Individuals who present themselves to me are primarily looking for the fact of getting physical help in order to be able to deal with their lives. Mm -hmm. When you're incapacitated, you feel very insecure. You 
really believe that your world is falling apart. Right. And I strongly believe you could fall apart at the moment, but you have to glue yourself together. And I believe that I provide that glue for them. That's wonderful. Somebody wants to call you and give you a number at once. <laughs> is there a way that they can contact you? Or? Well, my business number, if this is permissible, is 416-781-8033. And I repeat, 416-781-8033. Okay. And a message could always be left at this number, too. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And the thing, so just to recap what we were talking about, um, so people have got to move. Absolutely. Be aware. Movement is life. Movement is circulation. Oh, yeah. Circulation is life. I yes. should rephrase that. Yes, circulation is so important. Exactly. And people lose it when they get their diabetes or lots of things. There's lots of things that cause bad circulation. Oh, my gosh. So they need to circulate. They need to move. <laughs> but it goes hand in hand. I say yeah. movement is circulation, and circulation is life. Okay, so that's the key. I have uh, one of the gals here at the radio station. She is in her 60s, and she jogs 10 kilometers per day. If that's her choice. That's her choice. But I told her, that, and this is for Marta, if you're listening in, I said, you got to listen in tonight because this, <laughs> this program is for you. Yes. <laughs> you know? All I can say is that you have to be certain that your body can withstand that kind of pounding of the cement. Exactly. And you may want to diversify your program mm -hmm. and include other things. Absolutely. And, yeah, know your body really well. Say, well, and the thing is, it's cumulative. You don't have to do an hour. You can do no. 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes another time. Like, do 30 minutes a day. It's cumulative. So, you know, walk Whatever, you know. Well, Walking I strongly good. believe in the fact that, and I'm talking now to ind challenged individuals, mm -hmm. individuals who require good, uh, um, good understanding of their bodies and to focus on what they have to do to make their body their personal best. So that's what I design a program for them. However, knowing that you have taken care of your body in other words you've placed yeah. the foundation then once you have that foundation in place right. then you can include anything else it could be walking it could be swimming it could be dancing it could yeah. be jogging it could be anything but you have to make certain that it's compatible with your body that's the thing, you know, and, and get always get a doctor's advice before you start anything Absolutely. as well. And uh, make sure, you, you know, not to go off medication because all of a sudden you think, wow, you know, I'm feeling no, so much better. Don't be you your own doctor. That, that's right. You know, Have you, advice and follow advice smartly. Exactly. Not that physician heal yourself thing. That's a very nice uh, you know, adage, but it's not necessarily <laughs> true. Not something that anyone should really do. So, um, Beverly, I want to thank you so much for coming in to the pro coming on to the My program pleasure. tonight wow uh so beverly d Bredani, uh we're going to go out with a little song called lulu's back in town this is an elegant elegant lady and you are an elegant lady Thank so uh uh beverly is always in town and uh this is a, a drink of water and we're signing off right now and uh next week we'll have uh, more great programming here at CHHA 1610 AM, and I'll see you at the radio uh, anniversary on the 18th at the Tibetan Canadian Cultural Center. Bye for now.
get your old tuxedo pressed I got to sew a button on your vest Cause tonight you got to look your best Cause Lulu's back in town You gotta get a half a buck somewhere You gotta shine your shoes and slick your hair Gotta get yourself a boutonniere Lulu's back in town You can tell all your pets, all your blondes and brunettes, Mr. Otis regrets that he won't be around. You can tell the mailman not to call, but you ain't coming home until the fall, and you might not get back home at all, cause Lulu's back in town. H A. Listen to us all around the world. Visit C H E J sixteen ten a m dot c a for new content daily. Radio Voices Latinas. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at C H H A sixteen ten a m.